The Bevel Plus command is a newer version of Bevel that allows for a bit more flexibility. It's a lot easier to use. Uh, it primarily is going to give you polygon geometry, but overall uh, it's going to look a lot cleaner, be a lot easier for you to handle. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to start off by creating uh, some text, just because that is one of the things that folks seem to be often beveling. We'll go ahead and create Maya again, the way we did before. We'll start off by grabbing the letter M. We'll go to Surfaces, Bevel Plus. Let me begin by resetting all of my settings. And the first thing you're going to notice when you open up this window is there are a lot of settings. But don't be alarmed because actually everything in here is very easy to manage. First off, we have uh, Create a Bevel at the start uh, or at the end or both, you know, sides of the curve. So let me just go ahead and apply this real quick. We'll take a look at that. If I shade up my view, you will notice that we are beveled at the start, and we're beveled back here at the end as well, back here behind everything. So that's how that's going to work. You have the bevel width, depth, and distance. You can create a cap at the start and at the end, and you have all of these styles you can adjust as well. Now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of pointing all of these out. We're actually going to adjust these inside the node because it's a lot easier to see what each thing does if you just go ahead and uh, adjust it intuitively inside the attribute editor. Now, the other tab we have up here at the top is Output Options. Whether or not you'd like to output to NURBS or to Polygons, uh, Polygons are going to end up looking really good in this case, uh, you can set your tessellation method to between two different methods. You have Count and Sampling, and I'll talk about those once we get inside the node. Uh, let me start off by deleting this just for a moment, and we can set this over to NURBS. You'll notice that the NURBS surface, while it does look really nice and smooth here, the inside is a, a polygon planar shape. So uh, that does look really sharp. It's very, very smooth, and in a lot of cases, this is what you may fall back on. But it does uh, keep us from getting to talk uh, about the, uh, the tessellation method. So for now, we're going to stick with polygons. Let's get rid of all these extra pieces. And I'll go ahead and click Apply. We'll close out this window, or at least minimize it. Let's go over to the Attribute Editor. And you'll notice I have the Bevel Plus One node. Now check this out. Um, let me select the node so that'll get our wires off of our object so we can see what's going on. I can switch off bevel at start. Now when you do this you may notice some things looking a little bit funny. Uh, this is due to uh, your caps and whatnot. So if you don't plan on beveling at the start, uh, watch what you do with your caps. You can switch this off at the end and uh, basically you're no longer beveling back here. It's just perfectly flat back here in the back. So. You can kind of see how that works, just switching beveling off. In most cases, you'll never want to not bevel at the start. So we can switch this off for the end. And I'll switch it back on. You can control your bevel width, which as I slide, you see what that's doing. It's widening out our bevel. We can go, you know, really tight and kind of professional or kind of big and sort of pillowy, like so. We have bevel depth, which will scale the whole thing forward and back or just control the extrude distance, which won't affect the bevels. It'll just lengthen and shorten the whole thing as one. We can control where our caps are, whether we have a cap at the start. So we can take that out, or we can cap at the end as well. We'll remove that. We have a tolerance that'll control uh, how accurate this is uh, positionally. Of course, this is using the global tolerance. If we had set this to, uh, I'm sorry, this is using the local tolerance. If we were using global, we would find this under our preferences in the settings pane for positional tolerance. And uh, finally, we have output settings. Uh, so our method right now is set to uh, sampling. Now, this is kind of interesting how this works. We have two different methods. We have count and we have sampling. Let me actually select the object right now to make this a little easier to see. What count is going to do is basically uh, you specify the number of polygons you want in the final object. And that's how Maya is going to calculate the whole thing. The more polygons you have, the cleaner the surface is going to look. You could set this to maybe 5,000 polygons, and it starts to look really nice. So it's all about that polygon count number. The other method, sampling, is a bit more involved, but offers you a lot more power. What you're doing is you're sampling along the surface and controlling how many uh, polygons you get in each section. First off, you have sample along the extrusion section. Now, what do you mean when I say, uh, what do I mean when I say section? Here's one section, the back bevel. The extrusion depth is another section. And finally, one more section here at the front bevel. 
So if we want, we can uh, sample this along the extrusion section, and each section will be tessellated separately. Or we can set this to along the complete extrusion, meaning that all of this is calculated as one. So if I set this down to three, notice we have basically uh, three subdivisions as we move through here. And I can keep increasing that. In most cases, setting this to extrusion section will give you the cleanest result. Now, I'm going to leave this set pretty high so that later on I can change the uh, outer style and we'll be able to see the difference dramatically. You can also uh, change the sampling along the curve span. You can set this to along each span of the curve. You will get uh, X number of samples. So it's going to break the curve up into each of its separate spans internally. Or along the complete curve, you can set a total number, which will space everything out kind of evenly. Uh, curve span is uh, naturally going to be quite a bit more accurate. So we'll pull that down to somewhere along here. So we get a nice, very smooth letter M. Now the other node we get created is the outer style curve. Now you saw this over in our options. Here's outer style. Uh, because this is a letter M, it doesn't have a hole in it. We don't really need an inner style. All we have is an outer style. Let me select this node to get rid of our wire frame. And I'll zoom up here in the corner so you can kind of see what's going on. The first style is straight out. I can set that to straight in, and in this case, <clears throat> excuse me, things kind of uh, cave in a little bit. <clears throat> Pardon me. So uh, that's not really you know, a big deal. We probably wouldn't be using it in this case anyway. It's just because the letter itself gets so thin that uh, by caving in, we sort of you know, overlap over ourselves. We can set this to convex out, like so. So there's a convex curve as it comes out. Let's take a look at concave out. We won't worry about the ends right now. Um, straight edge, I'm sorry, straight side edge. So the edges are straight. The outside is nice and rounded. Straight front edge, which basically insets your flat pane like so. Straight corner. Convex side edge. You can see how that kind of makes a convex surface. Um, convex corner, like so. Concave side edge, which in this case we're kind of crushing in over ourselves, so it's not going to help us too much. Not unless we go back to our bevel and increase our bevel width. Or decrease it in this case, and we can start to see an effect here. If we tweak that. And then uh, we have concave front edge, like so. Very cool looking and convex crease. So you can play with these and get a variety of different effects across your surface. Now, if you plan on doing this with a letter that has a hole in it, you need to select your outer curve and then your inner curve, and then go ahead and run your bevel, like so. Now I'll go into my bevel node. Let's make sure we are set to sampling. We'll go along extrusion sections and curve span. I'm just going to crank this up to a high value, because now you'll notice that I have an outer style that I can set to anything I want, and I have an inner style, and that's going to control what's going on inside the holes there. So you can set those to two entirely different things, and you have a lot of control over what your bevels look like. Aside from that, it's just kind of playing with your settings and finding settings that you like you know, for when you're creating 3D text, or uh, anything else that you may happen to be beveling. You might not be using this for 3D text at all. You could create any NURB surface you like, or any, I'm sorry, any NURBS curve you like, and bevel that out. So that's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.